There is a history here in presidential elections uh, by the Russian Federation, by its intelligence services, and there's plenty of reason uh, to be concerned. And this is not about politics. This is about national security. It is about a foreign country, a foreign adversary seeking uh, to manipulate the politics and democracy of the United States of America. We are going to be vigilant about that, and we will engage the Congress on a bipartisan basis because this should be above and beyond politics. He's right and he's wrong, because for Republicans, it is their politics. Now, of course, efforts by any foreign power, even an adversary, used to be and should be above politics, but they're not. Republicans are at this moment, wittingly or unwittingly, assisting Russia, big time. Case in point, former FBI informant Alexander Smirnov has been charged with lying to the FBI about President Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. He was in court today where a judge ordered him remanded pending his trial. Prosecutors have argued that he was a serious flight risk given his ties to Russian intelligence. Hmm, wonder where he'd go. It's an allegation that would be alarming enough on its own. Add to that the fact that House Republicans used him. They touted Smirnov's endlessly, his testimony on the airwaves and on Capitol Hill. It's all part of a very explicit and deliberate permission structure created by Republicans around Russian disinformation. Eight years ago, Donald Trump asked Russia to hack his Democratic opponent. Call and response again. They did. Two years later, he took Russia's denial of election interference at face value from the podium. And now in just the last month, as he marches toward the Republican nomination without any resistance from any Republicans, he refuses to condemn the murder of Russia's most prominent opposition leader in prison, Alexei Navalny. And he actually invited Russia to attack our NATO allies. According to NBC News, quote, the potential rewards for Russian President Vladimir Putin are high. One expert says this, quote, not that they didn't have an incentive to interfere in the last two presidential elections, but I would say that the incentive to interfere is heightened right now. Joining our conversation, former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI, Frank Figluzzi, Claire and Andrew are still here. They're here for the hour. Frank, someone said to me that if you saw what Putin was willing to do and green light and look the other way for in 16 and 20, what he's willing to do with soldiers on the battlefield dying in 2024 will make those things seem like games. First, welcome back, Nicole. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Yeah, I mean, to quote uh, New York Yankee uh, Hall of Famer Yogi Berra, it's like deja vu all over again. Here we are again talking about, as Trump says frequently, Russia, Russia, Russia. But we say Russia, Russia, Russia for a reason. The party and Trump are absolutely linked to Russia and Putin, and that's now what they stand for. So, um, yes, as NBC News has reported uh, out today, experts are saying that they are already seeing the bots and trolls and, that are attributed to a, a Russian signature, as we say in the business. And yes, exhibit A of a non-cyber uh, attempt would be Alexander Smirnov in court today in California, who prosecutors assert has absolutely strong ties to multiple Russian intelligence affiliated persons, if not actual Russian IOs themselves, who are been, have been passing him disinformation. And he's lying and he has said, <clears throat> I got this from the Russian intelligence services. So here we are. What's going to be different, and I would assert worse this time around than, than 16? A couple of factors. First, technology. Artificial intelligence, AI, um, is going to allow deep fakes, and already, we've already seen this in a phone call, a robocall pretending to be Joe Biden up north, um, but we're going to see it in droves. We're going to see uh, fake, uh, deep fake videos and deep fake images. We're going to see targeting of it to specific precincts and swing states. It's going to be very laser focused. It's going to be very hard to get out in front of. Second factor related to how hard it is to get out in front of is the, the social media platforms today seem far less interested, in, and the poster child for that would be Elon Musk, far less interested and far less capacity <clears throat> to do anything about it. Elon Musk uh, at Twitter, now known as X, has essentially fired the reams and teams of people responsible for looking for foreign fake accounts, foreign government accounts. Who's buying the ads? Where are they adjacent to? They, those people are gone that would vet all of that. 
So it's going to be unfettered. And then the other platforms seem to be gun shy, right? If we work too closely with the FBI, God forbid, the FBI tells us they think this is coming from Russia. Oh, my God, you know, we got our hands slapped last time. So there's, there's less of that. And then add into it all of the factors you've mentioned that make Russia want to help Trump. Ukraine, N NATO, um, the death of Navalny, right? We had the Saudis murder a journalist. Um, and now here comes Putin at murdering Navalny. He knows there'll be no pushback from Trump. This makes the situation far worse, potentially, for this election. You investigated and prosecuted um, the intersection of Russia and Trump's campaign last time. Um, just tell me how, how smart up happens and, and what it says. How much worse off are we that he got as far as he did? Um, so before I answer that direct question, I just want to make sure people understand something that um, Frank said, which is that the foreign president's really good at, at trying to just by using this phrase, Russia, 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 to sort of be like, oh, that's behind us and nothing was there. And so move on. That's just some um, democratic ploy. Um, when, as Professor Snyder at Yale has said, that is like a tactic to not have us look at what are the actual facts. That was a, that investigation in 2016 was about whether there was a criminal proof beyond a reasonable doubt of a criminal conspiracy between the Trump campaign up to and including Trump and the Russian government. That is a very different thing than what we're talking about, which is, um, is was Russia then and now trying to interfere in the election? There is no question it was doing that then, and there is no question it is doing it now, and it is no question it is going to continue doing that. That is a given. And as you pointed out, not only does Putin need it because if Donald Trump wins, Ukraine is over. Let's Correct. just call it what it is. Correct. And Trump needs it because if he wins, the federal cases are over and the state cases are on ice. So the confluence of interests is, couldn't be stronger. Um, and then how does a, an informant happen if an informant... Wait, let, me, let me ask you your first point, though. Yeah. I mean, because it, it feels like we're, 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 we went from, you know, the Russia hoax to damn right we're colluding and it's not illegal. We'll prove it. I mean, it, totally it, it went right. from like, I didn't do it to, yeah, I did it and watch us do it again. Couldn't agree more. So it, when we were looking at this, there was sort of a given that this was like a third Because it was about we his were, manhood. Like, it, I didn't need Putin. I went uh, all by myself. Now exactly. he's like, bring it on. It, Exactly. That is exactly right. And and the other thing that's changed is, if you remember, there was the Mueller report, but there was also a bipartisan the Senate. It was, Senate it report. It was worse for him it's, on the Russia stuff. It right. was about being compromised. It, it, it was about hookers. It, it, was, it was terrible for him. It exactly. was led by a Republican. And it was bipartisan. Why am I saying that? Because that was when there were, there were some people in the Republican who Party Russia. who actually viewed this as the clip you played as the way it should be, which is this is a national security issue. This is just so not a political issue issue. No foreign country should be helping either side. It doesn't matter if they were doing this for Biden or, or for right. Trump. Um, and that is another, th another thing that's changed. It's not just Trump saying, yeah, bring it on. We know he did that at the Trump Tower meeting in 2016 when it's like, oh, Russia, you have disinformation on Hillary Clinton. Great. You know, that's what you say it is. I love it. Um, yeah. I